We are back live. Uh, just amazing uh, information. It dovetails with everything else we've got that we have with our last guest. You're welcome to call in about any subject you want. I, I've already covered quite a bit of news in the first hour, but nothing when you look at all the stacks I've got that must be covered here. This is so big, it, it, it polaxed me when I saw it uh, during the break before last. In fact, guys, will you put Infowars.com up on screen for me? Thank you. I always get, I say I get emails. I, I, the guys print off people's emails to me by the stacks that come into the uh, general tips box, and I scan over them. People are like, why do you keep saying put it on screen? You're a radio show. I'm listening on XM 166, or I'm listening on my local AM. We're streaming video at prisonplanet.tv, and we do that. So there's a video record of what I'm saying. That's why, that's why I started Infowars.com in uh, 1997, was just so I could post four or five articles a day that would be my top stories. So if people didn't believe me, they could go read a piece of legislation, they could go read a link to a news article, and then it grew from there. Well, that's why we started, I don't know, six years ago, putting video up uh, in a multicam shoot of the radio show so that people can see what I'm saying. It's a, it's a learning process. You're learning while I'm learning while the crew's learning. I mean, I'll say, hey, let's uh, search engine this term. And everybody will see the responses we get right there in real time. Now, here is the incredible news at Infowars.com right now. Department of Homeland Security prepares to grab DNA from kids, UN and World Bank strangle sovereign nations into accepting global population reduction di dictates. Yeah, they're now openly announcing that they want to sterilize people if you want to get your welfare check, which sounds reasonable, but they grew these masses of people you know, on the surface. Why should I pay for your kids? You, know, you want more money, don't have more kids. But they do that to then sell the idea for everybody. Plus, they then take those giant underclasses and make them the adult enforcers. UN and World Bank strangle sovereign nations in accepting global population reduction dictates. Here's another big one. OKC and 9-11 investigator victim of setup? Question mark. That's the new pedophile charges against the top FBI agent. I mean, you know, the head of their bomb forensics unit, the head guy over 9-11, Oklahoma City. The head cover-up artist, boy, they're burning their own right there. And again, how do I know it's a setup? Paul Watson, and I put this article together this morning. I gave him the basic research, and he added more and went out and put the article together. I'm not telling you about that so that you know who actually did the article. It, it's more so you understand why my name is on the article. Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones, how do I know that? Because... Giant agencies, private contractors, FBI agents, you name it, are allowed to kidnap kids and snuff them on video. It's come out, and they don't get in trouble. They're allowed to run giant child kidnapping rings that are so big, it's in the millions over a three-year period. It was 1.1 million, that's BBC, 2000 to 2003. Look it up. The U.N., everywhere they go, rape, rob, murder, sex slaves, uh, physical slaves. Halliburton loads up thousands of men, usually flies them to remote islands, other side of the world, to work in horrible sweatshop factories as total slaves. I mean, it's, it's beyond any movie you could imagine, and it's going on everywhere. Totally ruthless, and they really hate America, and they want to do that here. The FBI will do whatever it's told. They've shown that with Oklahoma City, 9-11, you name it. So when they are busting somebody, it's the occasional PR bust. A snack is what they call it to make it look like they're fighting crime. Or it's the low-level compartmentalized groups that are just dealing with white-collar stuff. But when you get a senior FBI agent, and I'm going to cover this more in the next hour after I go to calls, who goes off to start his own firm, and then they bust him, and it's this thing of looking at child porn. You know, a federal court ruled, I'm going to cover that later, that looking at it isn't a crime. It's disgusting, it's horrible, it's dehumanizing. But the point is, they don't want 
to actually prosecute the real people. They want to be able to just have something pop up on your computer. I mean, what about the World Net Daily Reporter we had on last week who went out and showed that Facebook allows serious child porn all over it? And I told the crew, I said, don't even look at it. Don't even look at the World Net Daily article, even though it's blurred out. And don't show it on TV. They'll selectively enforce on us. Just get her on. Because under this system, they could go after a reporter that reports on it. Well, the federal court said you can't, and they're saying it's a pro pedophile ruling. No, it's not. It's saying something pops up on your computer. I've never seen anything like that on a computer, but I've, I've been on uh, back when MySpace was still being used, you know, and a video pops up of a guy with a horse, you know, just discuss. I, I, you know, I mean, you know what you've seen. You've been on the Internet, and, and you're on one of those big sites, and some cookie gets thrown on your computer. I'm not really a tech guy, but, you know, I saw once something pop up that was just, you know, ugh. I mean, a lot of disgusting stuff on there is the point. And that, you know, it just pops up. We're going to even close your eyes. There's that image of, 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 just, of just, you know, just, just disgusting things. It's not kind of stuff the globalists are into, eating poop and things like that. So the point is, that stuff pops up. Oh, you're going to jail now. All they got to do is put that stuff on the Pentagon computers, then blackmail everybody. And that's what they're doing. And again, even if he was really doing this, because a lot of the folks that will bomb buildings or be part of covering them up, they're into that kind of stuff. I mean, if you're going to blow up federal buildings and then pose as the guy doing the research, you know, to, to, to cover up, as we know they had bombs in there in Oklahoma City. He's the head guy that covered that up. I don't have to go over all the evidence of the inside job. It's ridiculous. So if even if he did it, they're selectively enforcing on him for some reason. Maybe he's a good guy who went along with the cover up early on because it was so big and didn't know what to do in the moment and was speaking out. I don't know. I just know. They don't bust DynCor, and Paul has it in his articles. We have congressional testimony where they admit they kidnap small children worldwide and, 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 and take them to Thailand, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Those are the three big ones. I mean, hellish stuff you can't even imagine. I've seen mainstream articles about they've got pleasure ships with kidnapped women and children on board of them. And it even comes out in the news that they have these yachts, I mean, big ocean liners that rich people go to in international waters. I wish they had a whale wars group ramming that ship and stopping it. Oh, I guess I'm being criminal now saying ram a ship. Okay, let them torture the children. The point is... They don't, they don't, but the upper echelons are into this and other sick stuff. You don't get in the club unless you are, unless you're bent and twisted and evil and enjoy this. I guess I'm already getting into this news, but uh, former FBI bomb investigator arrested on child pornography charges. And even when he said not guilty, they said a preliminary not guilty to make it sound like he's bad. They don't even say he was the head guy over the entire system. The head of their laboratory for explosives, their head instructor, their, their, their head forensics investigator, the guy they had run Oklahoma City in 9-11 cover-up. And he's caught with kitty porn on his website. Or on his, uh, his uh, email. All they got to do is go into your email. Understand that, public. It comes out more than a third of the people on death row are innocent. And it turns out the prosecutors... Right up in Williamson County, it's a new famous case, and I want to get that guy on. They knew he was innocent and wanted to put an innocent man in jail. And then when they found out he was totally innocent and there was proof, they worked for decades to suppress it. I mean, these people enjoy hurting innocence. Really evil people enjoy hurting innocence. Now, here's the big breaking news. And when I saw this, it just absolutely poleaxed me. And, and, I, and I had Steve Watson's headline changed during the last break because I don't have time to call him up and do it. See, Steve Watson, Aaron, Kurt, great minds, wonderful people, better than I am on so many fronts. But they have the same problem I have. This stuff's so big, real tyranny, so wild and sensational. We all have governors to cut back our headline. And then we have the moles and people that say, oh, and the trolls that say, oh, we're exaggerating. 99% of the time, and I mean literally, we are actually holding back. And I've got to stop doing that. 
So I saw the headline, Ron Paul campaign, the future belongs to us. Well, I didn't go read that when I saw that headline. I'm like, oh, great, future belongs to us. You know, uh, a play on words because Obama says winning the future, you know, for tyranny is his new campaign slogan. And then I went and read what Ron Paul actually said today. All they said is we're not going to fight and compete in those states because we don't have the money. But but we've we've won delegates in many of these others. They really won Maine, Iowa. Those got cheated. That's all come out. The media keeps lying and saying he didn't win, even though they admit he did win in the fine print. He says they're still going to try to get the delegates and still try to contest things at the RNC, which is great to inject issues. You, you win either way. And the media came out with a headline that he dropped out. Christian Science Monitor, Ron Paul effectively ends presidential campaign. No, he didn't. He said that we're not going to go into debt. And so we're going to let the grassroots campaign move forward from here. And Jesse Benton is quoted, said, let me be very clear, writes Chief Strategist Jesse Benton in the opening lines of a memo. Dr. Paul is not dropping out, suspending his campaign. That was what he put out yesterday. And I'm out doing a video shoot yesterday afternoon, and everybody's calling me going, he dropped out, it's all over the news. Rumors of his death have been greatly exaggerated. Put it to you that way. This article's important. I've had the headline upgraded to Ron Paul not suspending campaign. It's a media hoax. It's at Infowars.com. Will you ask Kurt before he leaves uh, for lunch? Will you ask him to red link that and to send it out on Twitter? Ron Paul not dropping out. It's a hoax. Ron Paul not suspending campaign. It's a media hoax is the headline. Okay, let's get that out to everybody, listeners. Will you please help me? Will you please go to Infowars.com? The problem is there's so many hoaxes. How do you deal with them? Okay, let's go to your phone calls. Uh, we'll go to... Daryl, then Brandon, Brian, Derek, John, and many others. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. And I've only covered about 25% of the news. I'll continue to smatter all this information in as we go. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Daryl in Georgia. You're on the air, uh, air Daryl. Go ahead. Awesome. For starters, I must say thank you to you and your staff for not screening my phone call like most of these stations do. Go ahead, I sir. Can't tell you nothing to Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Now, I can't tell you nothing that you don't already know about Ron Paul. I just want to say thank you to the people. We, we, we got this far without the media. They robbed us in 08 because we didn't know how to play the game. They, they, now that we, it's, a new, it's a new term, a new, a new election, I apologize, a new campaign, you know, we, we knew we were not going to get any media play. So we, we're doing it the correct way. We're following the rules. We're getting the delegates. Turn off the TV people. We all know the media is nothing but lies. Now, if, if, with your permission, sir, I have a rally coming up in the state of Georgia. I would like to promote this if possible, sir. Sure, go ahead. Tell us about your rally. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The rally is called Take It to the Media. It's going to be at the CNN Center June 24th. You can look it up on Facebook. My name is Daryl Young from Loganville, Georgia. We already know the media will only broadcast what they want to. They are the one that brings in the drugs, sells the guns, Launder all this fake money, but we are the ones that are treated like criminals. I am 27. I've dedicated six, of my, six years of my life to the cause. The good fight goes on. Power to the people. Thank you for your time, sir. God bless you. I hope folks get involved in that. And as Ron Paul said in his letter yesterday, we're, they're just suspending fighting in those states with full bore media and everything because he's not going to go into debt. Look, look, if you just joined us here, new listener, we knew he won Iowa. We knew he won Maine. Even the New York Times had to admit, yeah, he won, but the Republicans won't count the precincts he won. We had the proof they stole Iowa. They stole other states uh, like Nevada. And so Paul says, I'll go the Electoral College way. I'll get the delegates. And so understand this. Whatever happens, we win because at least Ron Paul's been there injecting issues and the Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan puppets, Obama and Romney, have been heavily affected by this now and have been exposed. I mean, Obama is in the news today saying J.P. Morgan is one of the best managed banks. I guess from a mafia perspective, uh, Al Capone was one of the best managed mobsters. I guess Hitler was one of the best managed dictators. I mean, I guess uh, brain cancer is, you know, one of the best managed cancers. I mean, wh what does that mean? This, this is the top of the New World Order. Of course, it's one of the best managed and above the law groups. Obama went on The View to say that.
He's paid for by them, and so is Mitt Romney. Obama's gotten double the money from Bain Capital. Guess he used to run that, Mitt Romney, than Mitt Romney has. We'll see what happens with Romney, but I think he's a complete ringer. I mean, he supported carbon taxes. He supported open borders. He supported uh, gun control. Do I need to go on about Mitt Romney? He wrote Obamacare. And I've got all these Republicans saying, you got to get behind Mitt Romney. What's going to happen if Mitt Romney gets in is everybody's going to go to sleep for about two years like they did with Obama thinking he's going to save us. And then everybody's going to wake up to that, and the left's going to attack all the police state again. And then, the, and then the, the, the right wing will think that if you're against the police state, you must be a leftist. I'm so sick of how they play that game. I just want freedom. Can you not figure that out? I don't want to be a slave. It's real simple. Let's go ahead and go to Brandon in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Hi, Alex. Um, thanks for taking my call. I, um, um, I do have um, one of your listeners, longtime listeners with uh, full, full spectrum awareness. And uh, just wanted to call it your previous guest was great and this kind of segues into that um i have a business in uh wisconsin and uh one of my patrons approached me and and uh i've known him for a while and he mentioned a story that was unfortunate that happened with uh dhs doing their undercover work in a in a bar not uh it was it was in our neighborhood and and uh he apparently his roommate for lack of Lack of uh, money had to go and work for the DHS. And um, uh, stay there. I want to hear this story. Yeah, uh, you didn't hang up, did you? Nope. Yeah, good. Because I heard a click. Uh, I, I want to hear this on the other side. I heard a crackle. Is more like it. Snap, crackle, pop. Yeah, everywhere. They've just got spies on taxpayer money sitting in bars listening to you. I mean, it's East Germany, folks. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Side Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. No one backs back as hard. All right, let's go uh, back to Brandon. So, Brandon, tell us your TSA story. Uh, I mean, excuse me, Homeland Security spy story keeping us safe. Uh, not from the. <clears throat> Department of Vaca Land Security, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so um, tell us your area. Tell us. Tell us what happened in Wisconsin. Yeah, and and right before I do that, I just want to say to those new listeners, I've i I'm one of the people that that uh, I've always got a nose for news, and uh, and I want to be objective about everything. So any of those uh, trolls out there in in blogosphere, um, I've pretty much vetted you. Uh, on my own as much as I possibly could, and the, the negatives are from mainly from wingnuts, some of whom I've actually talked to nationally, and uh, I, I can just vouch for your awesome staff. Yeah, I'm mainly uh, attacked by jealous people, but also they've got operatives. They just don't have people sitting in restaurants listening to people talk about you know their favorite football team, uh, and, you know, just creating the idea that we're all terrorists. Uh, tell us the story. Yeah, um, and and uh, and and real quick before that, if you want to get into the mindset of the uber elite of the royal empire, I, 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 everyone needs a little time off. If you go back and watch basically most of Braveheart, you know where he talks about the problem with Scot Scotland is there are too many Scots, and so they weed them out with prima note. Well, that's what's happening with the vaccines and the GMOs. And uh, also watch the Tudors, maybe a series like that, and you really get into the mindset of by any means possible, not just any means available. They're using every tool at their disposal, so I'm glad they that you are stay well. in power by being faint of heart. Engineer the food to sterilize and kill them. We will win. I mean, we're already deep into their extermination. But, I mean, tell me the story. Yeah, the Subversion and Obfuscation Department. Um, anyway, um, the story is that so there was a, a, a follow-up for someone that I know, and they were out celebrating their, their um, disabled, and they... Uh, have a hard time getting around. They took a little 
spill um, off of their bar stool accidentally, and it was you know they he knew it was time to go anyway, and uh, but he hurt his arm and needed his arm to to for his apparatus to get home. And uh, people wanted to call the ambulance. He said, no, 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 it's not like that. Just, just I need to get a cab or whatever. So the bartender didn't want to just call up a cab and put a drunken disabled person in there. And then, lo and behold, two young, strapping young bucks step up, and they said, you know, we're, we're going that way without even knowing where he lived. We can give him a ride home. <clears throat> and this is a guy whose roommate, one of his good friends, uh, had no other option financially with his student loans but to take a job for the DHS. And as you remember, the protest started nationally here in Madison, Wisconsin, with, with uh, Scott Walker just axing all the teachers and just stripping collective bargaining rights. And um, Okay, we're going to have to get the rest of this on the other side, okay? Because I, I want to... The, the dramatic conclusion... Of Stasi USA. Right ahead. Brandon, finishing your story. Okay, so uh, the guy needs help getting home. Two guys stand up at the bar. They say we're going to help him. It sounds like the beginning of a joke. Uh, tell me the rest of the story. I'll shorten it up. Uh, so they said they, they so they 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 basically help lift him in the car, lift his apparatus in the car, start driving him home. And he realizes, well, they're not going directly to where I live, and he's explaining that, and they go in this roundabout pattern, and they basically say, do you know who we are? And he said, uh, hopefully just some people giving me a ride home. And uh, they said, well, we're with DHS, and we don't like what you've been posting. And, and they put in a monitoring station at our next to our state capitol for all the protests. And uh, they said, you, if you know what's good for you, basically, if you know what's good for you, you're not going to keep doing that. And, you know, kind of being imposing and, you know, you're at our mercy, you're handicapped drunk in, in our car. And then they said beyond that, he, you know, he was kind of freaked out, of course. But beyond that, they started pressing him for names of local preppers. So anyone who's got any sort of food, water or other sorts of self-reliance, they wanted to know about. And I just thought. Uh, oh, yeah, these guys are such be. incredible terrorists, and and uh, they love it, though. I mean, look, you can't even go to the Texas seashore now, uh, where I've been going since I was born, without them. They're just harassing everyone and getting in your face and talking to you and, and bossing you around. And it's like, we're the government, and we actually enjoy this. Can you imagine groping people all day or, or co constantly... Getting in people's faces, I mean, imagine their shriveled little egos. I mean, imagine how shameful these people are. That, oh, my gosh, the country's going to totally collapse. So, it, I mean, your friend needs to speak out. I mean, I mean, did he shut up and get scared? How did the story end? No, he's been telling me, telling the story to myself and other people who um, all have our library of uh, DVDs. I. I loan them out. I just write on the box that it came in from Infowars. I have your big collection, and we 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 get the word out there. Um, probably time for local cable access, like you say. Yeah, or, no, uh, it's time to get really aggressive and call the local police on uh, those guys. So there's a record of it. And uh, I mean, I'd love to see them in some bar or restaurant. I'd say, what's your problem? Don't you understand this is America? You think you can have a covert operation to intimidate people? And to create a chilling effect underground, you guys really are the bad guys. And if they try to start intimidating you or something, go, oh, so you're evil. You, I mean, you think you, you think j that you're going to win acting like this. Just can you imagine how scummy somebody like that is? So uh, they want him to know we've been tracking you without a warrant. We'll do whatever we want. Uh, anything else they told him? How did it end? They just dropped him off at home. They dropped him off at home, and they were they were hesitant about uh, they they got him. I think they got him out of the car, and then were slow to get his uh, mobility apparatus out of the vehicle, and just said, <laughs> "Why don't you want to tell us about the the what preppers you know?" And he said, "I don't know anyone who's got more than a sink full of extra water. So uh, you know, someone has a bunch of extra TP at their house. Does that qualify?" I think he kind of. Got it. You know, I think yeah, but what's incredible is they're, I mean, they admit they're spying on people and, 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 and doing that. But imagine not wanting to give some guy that's got, you know, one of those little things that, you know, people that are hurt used to go around the grocery store 
Uh, what do you? What do they call those little things you ride around on? I mean, the point is, what? I mean, these people are that low. I, I, I believe you. Now harassing handicapped people, and we're not going to give you your crutches back, old man. Eh? Eh? We're the good guys because that's what they want. They want criminals. They want criminals. Amazing. Well, there you go. Man, this country is land of the wolves, home of the sheep. And the wolves know what's for dinner. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at Infowars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Older gentleman who rides around on one of those little rascal vehicles. Yeah, his arm was hurt, and he didn't think he could drive home with it. And he was asking somebody for a ride, so two guys stepped forward and said, two strapping gentlemen said, we'll uh, give you a ride. And they started interrogating him, saying, do you know preppers? We don't like what you've been writing on the Internet about the government. You better watch it. And, you know, that could be a made-up story. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that every dentist my dad knows that he's talked to has been approached by Homeland Security to spy on their patients. It's totally illegal. And it's right out of the Soviet Union. And I do know that we have a big report at Infowars.com that Kurt Nemo did with direct links to the Homeland Security documents where Homeland Security is taking the DNA of children without parental consent through the public schools. They've already got several agencies doing it, now they're expanding it. Department of Homeland Security prepares to grab DNA from kids. And we went with that headline because the Electronic Frontier Foundation announced they're preparing to expand it, but then you actually learn since 2010 they've already been doing it. And they say, your child has consent. Of course, legally, they don't have consent, but it's it, what, they're giving them vaccines in California and other states saying you're going to get a, a $20 if you take the shot. Now, do you sign the consent form? Well, I'm only 11 years old. My mommy, you ask my mommy? Mom, we don't ask mommy anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, again, I had a guy on earlier using a fake first name. He wanted to come into the show. And I've known him for a while and tell the whole story. I said, no, keep your sources. Don't burn bridges at this point. And, you know, he was talking about how the police are finally going, wow, Alex Jones is right. The military is like, yeah, this is real. Uh, the contractors, a lot of them are saying no because they're getting them out of these bases and they're saying, all right, the, mi the mission is shifting from Hodges. This is word for word. And it is a pejorative term, but that's for documentary purposes, that's what they're calling them. We're shifting away from the Muslims, and we're shifting over to the good old boys. There's going to be a civil war in America. Well, you've heard all my other guests on this and seen the documents, and uh, we're going to take them. We're going to get their guns. Are you ready for that? And it's also a way to assess who's awake and who isn't. And uh, most of the people are saying no, but see, it doesn't matter. They're destroying the economy. And it'll be Merck's leading foreign troops. And that's in the NLE 09 document, all of it. We're not in Kansas anymore. You notice the Euros melting down into globalist control. You notice that they're gearing up here. They're getting ready to have the derivatives melt down. And they're going to sign us all on. They already have, but they're going to tell you, it's your fault. you got to give J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs everything you got. And the media is going to say, aren't we lucky we've got them? Ben Bernanke's a hero. Well, you've already seen him saying that. 
and they're going to raise your taxes. They're announcing they're going to have forced brigade work. You're going to have to go out and you know dig ditches like the Soviet Union. And there's going to be riots as the welfare crowd uh, goes crazy because their checks will still come. Just with inflation, they're not going to buy anything. And then you'll welcome the military coming to your area in the first wave. Then the terrorists are going to hit the military. <gasps> oh, the right wingers that, or the patriot people that didn't who who said terrible things that were right about everything and actually were real Americans. And then oh, their leaders have to be arrested. Then the civil war starts. Then people don't have a choice. And then the police and military will be defeated. In most areas, they will be uh, sent into bunker-type facilities. They call it going to the mattresses. They're going to go into a fortress mentality, only venturing out uh, to revenue generate and make drug deliveries. Uh, and uh, they're just going to let the rest of the country rot and fall apart into civil war. Now, that's the globalist plan. I told you four and a half years ago that I ended up talking to a, uh, the, one of the richest women in the world uh, on paper. I mean, she's actually poor compared to the real elite, but you know she's in the Forbes list. <clears throat> and she said, I'm leaving the United States. And I said, why? And she said, well, there won't be a United States. It's going to totally collapse from derivatives. And I said, uh, And she was telling me this at the time. I didn't know who she was. She said, oh, I own a defense company. I own this and that. Uh, and I'm looking at her. She's talking to me. Uh, you know, I'm sitting there in this law office uh, getting some paperwork done. She's sitting there telling me this. And she goes, I think you're going to be very successful. She winked at me. She goes, everything you're saying is dead on. You're going to be very successful if you live. You're going to be very big. You already are, I know. But you're going to be a household name all over the world. Never told the full story. And I'm sitting there listening to this. And, and I said, there's not going to be a U.S.? And she said, no, they're, 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 they're derivatives. It's, it's, it's going to be fully imploded. And I go, well, what is, is it going to exist? She goes, you'll see. I go, what do you mean? She goes, everything you've been saying. They want this country to go under. And she said, I'm getting out of here. So I go home that day and type in her name. The feds spy on me. They know I went and Googled her name that day. They could place the day. I don't remember. It was like four and a half years ago. And there was her photo. There she was in the news. There she was and all the, you know, and, and she's sitting there just telling me this. And I go, and it's a multi-billionaire woman. <clears throat> it's not like she was waiting on somebody. I guess she got there earlier and the lawyer wasn't there yet. One of these big giant law firms, and I guess she was just here locally dealing with a few properties. I guess it was high-rise buildings she owned or something. But but uh, liquidating U.S. holdings. I was just in a law firm because I thought I was getting messed around on the lease that I'd set up, so I was wanting to get a second opinion on that. I'm glad to be surprised if you meet in lawyers' offices. The point is, is that I want to go to your calls. I just cannot telegraph to you how real this is and how bad this is. We can back this off. You know, if we back this off, people say, oh, look, Alex said all this was going to happen, and it didn't. Well, everything else I set up to this point's now happened. Re-education camp, secret arrest, and you're like, why are they announcing it? Because they got to get the military and police standing around going, well, I guess it's on the news. I guess it's all right. Yeah, the troops grow the opium. We got re-education camps, and we're going to arrest people that look like Hank Williams Jr. And that's basically it. This is your new enemy. He is the Bubba. Literally. And people are like, that's me. I'm the new enemy. Oh, you're not the new enemy yet. And they're just assessing who's going to join us, and they're just getting their force ready. I mean, is, is there any end to this? Do we have to let all this happen? I was talking to the gentleman we had on earlier, and he was meeting with some police that are his friends. And they're like, yeah, Alex Jones is right about a lot of this, but he's still alarmist. But, yeah, they asked us to do a lot of illegal stuff. We don't like it. I'm alarmist, but you're being asked to do illegal things. And every time Arde Saveda comes in here 
with his silver tongue. He just is so friendly and so nice. And hey, gee, he doesn't know about any of this. Jeepers, creepers, Mrs. Haskell. I don't know anything about that. I want to go to David to Florida listening on 810-A-M-W-E-U-S. Then we'll go to Brian. David, you're on the air on the Big Ten out of Orlando where we're number one. Go ahead, sir. Thanks for taking my call, Alex. Thanks for calling. What's on your mind? First time caller, long, long, long time listener. I'd like to thank you for waking me up to the facts of what's going on with this country. And my call today is pertaining to our elected officials here in Orlando, mainly the sheriff. Yes. If you're a citizen you, and you elect these individuals, you should be able to correspond with them, either be email or phone calls. We have corruption in our local sheriff's office in Orange County, Florida. No, there's no corruption in Florida law enforcement. Come on. Next, you're going to tell me that the moon orbits the earth. I mean, that's ridiculous. Right. Uh, I tried to call the sheriff office of the sheriff, and I was denied access to his office. So I guess us, the people that vote for him are not allowed to, to speak to our elected officials. So you were denied access to his private phone or, or into his general office? Into his general office. Well, that's that's. I think that's illegal. Well, the reason I was calling was because I had a issue of drinking a beer in a public park from over 12 years ago. I paid the fines 12 years ago. I even did a, a couple of days in jail for it. And 12 years later, I was arrested for it again. And I questioned it, and they said it was contempt of court. And I'm like, how can it be contempt of court when I've already did the time and already paid the fine? Oh, yeah. This was in the L.A. Times last month. And, and a few weeks before that, I saw it in another big paper, I'm trying to remember, where there's computer glitches everywhere. That's like in the Terry Gilliam movie, What a Genius, Brazil. A bug falls in the typewriter, uh, and so it changes the name, and they go secretly arrest and kill an innocent guy. Uh, but 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 again, that begs the question: a tyranny. Everybody's innocent because you can't trust it to carry out uh, enforcement of anything because it 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 itself is bankrupt. But yeah, I, I saw some incredible number where it, in just L.A. alone they arrest thousands of innocent people. Uh, I think it said every month. I have to pull the article up because the computers are all fried and even if, like it won't let you go to court or it just says you have tickets you don't and they just arrest you. Here's an example. I've gotten two registration stickers where it's not printed right and is off the... I got one like two years ago and I got one this year. And I'm just waiting to get pulled over because you can't even see the numbers because all they are is just up on the edge because it, it was printed on the whole printout instead of the sticker itself. You know what? I want to hear more about this. Tell me the rest of the story when we come back because this is plaguing everybody. They're like, we don't care. The computer says it. You're going to jail. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, uh, going back to the caller. Uh, in fact, guys, I meant to talk to you during the break, but my dad's actually here visiting, and I ended up talking to him. Um, will you type in something like innocent Californians being arrested under computer glitch or something like that? Uh, that was the last article I saw. But it's all over the country. And they accidentally say you owe more property taxes as well. And they accidentally say you haven't paid it and accidentally take your house and put it in a trust the government bureaucrats own. And then they keep it because they're criminals. I saw that in the news a few days ago. And Bank of America takes houses they never had a deed to that are paid for in cash that people have lived in for 12 years. That's CNN. It's an accident, though. <laughs> uh, again, this is a criminal group. And as soon as we get that, just because they have the authority because they're in charge, doesn't make them legal or lawful. Uh, so going back to David in Florida. So um, you were saying it's 10, 11, 12 years later. How many years later? You got arrested for drinking a beer in a park. Violent criminal that you are. Very evil. Taxpayer money well spent. Uh, and now years later, they've come and arrested you again for it. Yes, sir, that's correct. Twelve years later, they arrested for, arrested me for it. I was actually making a complaint with the sheriff's office, and they came back out to my, while I was uh, 
trying to get on my motorcycle, and they said, uh, excuse me, we need to talk to you, and we need to see your ID again. And that's when I was surrounded by the thugs and was... Well, they showed you who's boss, boy. You don't exercise your First Amendment. <laughs> and don't exercise anything else, because police, don't worry. It's not just that pesky First Amendment you get to get rid of. It's all the private property and due process and all the good things about America. So good job. Oh, yeah, that's, th that's a classic. So... And I guess the judge is going to go along with that, everybody. Why not just plant child porn on your computer while they're at it, you know? Well, what it ended up happening is when I went to court, Alex, I asked the judge, I said, how can this slip by the system for over 12 years? Because I'm not bragging about it and I'm not proud of it, but under Florida law, if you get caught driving on a suspended license, you go to jail. Well, between that time frame, 12 years ago and this, if we go... 15, 16 years into the future from that 12-year point, I had been arrested for driving while license suspended or revoked. I found it out when they do the NCIC or C that this 12-year-old this warrant never existed. I was cleared to go. And then all of a sudden, a year, a year, year and a half ago, this warrant pops up out of the blue. So yeah, what said. they're doing is integrating them all together, and now they can just pick you up and claim you have a warrant and disappear you. Last time I checked, Texas, 11% of the population has warrants out. That's who we are. We're a joke. We have the biggest prison population in the world because we're run by criminals. And, and hey, don't worry. Those of you that haven't woken up yet, you're going to get everything you want. You're going to get all the curses that come with tyranny. So I hope you enjoy your petty power trips, minions, because it's not going to last. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, thank you, David, the evil person. Uh, let's talk to Brian in Arizona. You're on the air, sir. Hey, Alex. How you doing? Um, just wanted to call in. I have another unfortunate story of the growing police state for you. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I got pictures to prove this one. So unlike the last story that we don't know if it's real or not, this one's confirmed. But uh, i got to give you a quick background on the situation. So uh, I'm a college student at Arizona State University, and at the end of each school year, we have a student, um, student run thing called the Undie Run. And it's kind of a silly event, but, you know, it's for the students. And it's at the recreation field every year. So let me guess, uh, people are now being charged with indecent exposure for an underwear run. Not quite, but they're getting, you know, grabbed to the ground and wrestled by pot belly pedophile cops. So, you know, you know, well, you don't want to excite them like that. <laughs> well, you don't want to get children running that. around in front of me. Either. They'll go into piranha mode. But so, so what happened? Yeah. So quick background for the first three years I was here, I just graduated. So I'm done there. But, you know, it was great. You know, there were limited cops. And the only reason they were there was to kind of stand around. But now the it's the new economy. So it's like cockroaches in an inner city uh, kitchen at 3 a.m. Oh, I mean, it is. It was so bad. I just, I was outraged. And All right, uh, so there's, so there's, there's, there's loving enforcers running around. Uh, what happened? Well, so it used to be at the recreation field, and you know, this year it was different. You know, we hear, oh, it's at the lot 59 parking lot. So everyone's a little confused. So you know, I'm, I'm, out, I'm walking there, and I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, oh whatever. Oh, they we'll misdirected you in a good blow against the victory, the milk cow Americans that feed the parasite. Oh, yes. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. All right, caller, I held you over because I wanted to hear what happened when the pot bellies attacked. And I have a little bit of a pot belly myself. Not much of one now because I've lost 42 pounds, but I'm not attacking people that have pot bellies. I just want to know why all the new cops have pot bellies and the TSA all have pot bellies, women included, and look like men. And I want to know why, why I have to bow down and worship them. I mean, I, it's the new class system. Like, you're a bureaucrat, you're God. You work for the government, you're God. You're a citizen paying their salary, you're trash. I'm sick of it. And I know I shouldn't be upset. They admit they've set up re-education camps for us and want to take our guns and want to secretly arrest us and kill us. I mean, I understand I'm radical and an alarmist, that I've been absolutely on target and everything's coming true, just like I said. 
I apologize. I'm a bad person. Uh, let's go to John, then uh, Derek, then Donald and others. John in Texas, you're on the air, sir. I hope you're not concerned about the state of the government because the founding fathers said you better watch the government and they were bad people. You're not about to call in and support the evil founders, are you? I'm going to support them all the way, Alex. Oh! oh Alex, I wanted to talk about uh, the article you had on there on uh, InfoWars about the Russian troops coming to America. And on the picture you had, the last two pictures you had on there in various articles, they had uh, pictures of, uh, I guess, Russian troops marching through Moscow. And I guess there were recent pictures because they had the new AK-47s with the plastic stocks. But why were they marching in front of uh, red flags in the background? If communism was dead in Russia, well, how come they have the red flags up? They never took them down. They created that new Russian flag for state events and showed it to people. The Red Star stayed on, all of it, and it's exactly what it is. It's the same with China, too. Uh, they still got all their communist trappings up there when they had military praise. They still have pictures of Mao. I mean, nothing's really changed. Oh, no, they admit that, I mean, China is 100% run by the Communist Party. That's not debated. And another thing I wanted to ask you, do you think it's some kind of sick globalist joke that they brought those Russian troops into Colorado because that was where, in the movie Red Dawn, that was where the Russians first came in there? Yeah, they said, no, that's exactly what it is. No, it, listen, it's all psychological warfare to acclimate. I mean, I've gotten to where, oh, they're going to put ships in the trips. Well, I covered that was coming 10 years ago, so it's okay. Oh, yeah, they're training troops from 15 nations to do door-to-door -door gun confiscation. Here's the FEMA document. It's no big deal. Oh, re-education camps. Oh, they confirm it. Big deal. So they're spying on all of us without warrants. Yeah, they're taking the troops' death benefits. When they die, they don't pay the widow, even though they took money out of their check for 20 years. Oh, that's no big deal. Yeah, the foreign banks, <laughs> they run everything now. <laughs> yeah, they got neighborhood spies now. Well, you know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Everything's fine, though, you know? Hey, Alex, uh, uh, back in the early 60s, I read a book called None Dare Call Treason by John Stormer. And uh, in the book, he, he, he said he laid out the plans just before World War II. That World War II was just kicking into high gear. And he said that uh, the, one of the Dulles brothers laid out the plans, and he said they're going to merge the communist and the capitalist system together. And it's been done, and they put everybody to sleep. Everybody thinks that, you know, communism don't exist, but while they're implementing it inside the United States. And they use the initial threat of communism to get America to get rid of its Bill of Rights and Constitution in the name of beating it. And then they then come back and take our rights, and then it's not for communism anymore, it's for being a patriot. Just like they get you to, okay, take my rights away because of Al-Qaeda, and then you're like, but wait, Al-Qaeda works for you now. And they're like, Al-Qaeda's good, you're the one that's bad. Homeland Security, get him. He has a John Deere cap on. I mean, literally. And a lot of these good old boys who love to grovel up to and, 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 and you know cram their noses up underneath the New World Order's patoot, uh, they they will they will sit there and denounce their families and cry as their son is taken away with an American flag out front the house made in China by slaves he bought at Walmart because their whole world they think patriotism is worshiping the foreign banks that have hijacked America they just can't get it I mean I watched the general public grovel to military and police and a lot of the military and police are good people but there's the specialized bureaucratic political police that they're now creating in, in every level of law enforcement and people will just grovel and grovel and grovel and grovel and grovel and grovel and grovel I mean you'll be there uh, like my parents it's not even groveling they're just real polite and they would sit there while these while these agents were giving them 20 questions at the beach and the guy was getting off on my mother's submissiveness. And, and my, my mother's a really nice, aggressive, smart person, but she's a Christian. And she think, you know, she's will into being calm and nice and ladylike. And the more she sat there, and the guy was assessing them and asking them questions. And we're not here to steal turtles, are we? There's little kids sitting there, you know, with... You know, eating chips, and we're just sitting there in lawn chairs in America, and and he's he's having this fantasy that we're bad, and 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 he's good, and I, and, I, and at a certain point, I'm like, just get out of here, leave me alone, <laughs> you America killing slug.
But I mean, again, this nanny state, they have this delusion that they're keeping us safe and they're doing all this good and they love their little uniforms and their outfits and all these nanny state women they've got in uniform with the little hats and their hair all done and they got something to prove and they're going to show you. Lady, the New World Order's got something to prove. You're going to probably die young from what they've been putting in the water and the food, you moron. I don't have time to play your childlike games with you anymore. John, I appreciate your call. I just, that's what happened. I just can't handle it anymore. They're idiots. I don't even hate them. They're idiots. They're morons. They're children. I'm done. Excuse me. Uh, let's talk to Derek in New York. That's therapy for me. Huh? Derek in New York, you're on the air. Go ahead. How are you doing, Alex? Uh, it's all coming true. I'm, I guess I'm doing all right. At least, we're, at least we were here to head them off at the pass. Maybe we can stop them. I don't know. Yeah, um, I got a quick quick story to tell you. I don't know if you heard, but I, I saw it uh, a couple of days ago about this woman in Florida who got arrested for this, defending herself against her husband. Now, the story goes that this lady, her husband was a, has a history of domestic violence with her, and she, she got sick of it. So he chased after her. She ran into the garage, grabbed a gun, and shot it straight up into the air. As no, I saw shot. that. Hey, guys, a uh, woman arrested for warning shot. No, no, no. That's what they said they do with the Trayvon Martin deal. That's why they hyped it up, regardless of what you think of that case, is to now say if you do a warning shot, which I think is totally reasonable, I mean, it, we, uh, it was in her garage, uh, that you shouldn't get in trouble for that. I mean, warning shot, I'm not, unfortunately, I understand not wanting to kill your husband. But if you're scared enough to grab a gun, it's, I mean, the funny thing is, she probably wouldn't have gotten in trouble if, she, uh, if she'd have shot him. No, I did see that. I didn't even get to it. Give us your take on it. Yeah, she got, she got 20 years. They gave her 20 years for shooting a one shot at a guy who's known, who, 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 he, he, he even said later, like, yo, I was going to put my hands on her. I was going to put my hands on my wife. And I think, uh, guys, type that in. Woman gets 20 years for firing a warning shot. I think they even said in the news, because I only scanned it for like one minute, that, that well, the, you know, the judge and the jury are probably being real, you know, hard on her because of, you know, the frowning upon the uh, use of guns in defense. Uh, but I did see that uh, just a few days ago. You're absolutely right. And uh, that's the new America. You know, the kicker is that the same prosecutor that prosecuted this woman is a prosecutor that's probably... probably uh, I can't tell you. I'm just doing Zimmerman right now. The same lady. Yeah, there it is. Uh, new stand your ground case. Not for Florida woman given 20 years. And let's uh, scroll scroll down more. And it says right here, the Trayvon Martin case and Florida stand your ground law have brought into sharp uh, relief yet again this time in a Jacksonville courtroom where a woman who said she fired a warning shot to ward off an abusive husband was sentenced to 20 years in prison. My gosh. I mean, how many people have had a gun go off on accident cleaning it? I mean, I haven't, but I don't know people that have. And it just goes on. Yeah, I saw that article. Uh, wh what do you think of that? I, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm beyond upset about that. Because I'm like, wow, she was in a, a messed up relationship. And she didn't, even, she didn't even shoot the guy. She didn't kill him or nothing like that. She put the shot in, the, and they, she shot in the sky. She's getting twenty years. Even the mother, the, her mother came on. Was on TV, was on TV in Florida. She came on and confronted the prosecutor. It's like, are you serious? And in, in so many ways, so, you know, like, are you serious? My daughter's gonna get twenty years. She said that's unbelievable. There's no way she, she should get twenty years for something. Yeah, it's Marissa uh, Alexander, thirty-one. Well, I gotta say, statistically, the courts are tougher on black people. And I don't get into the whole culture of victimology, but it is true that there is walking while black, driving while black, uh, and there's that idea that black people are somehow, you know, you know, uh, evil and deserve it. And I guess because she's a black lady is why she's going to get 20 years. I tell you, it's pretty sick. 20 years for firing a gun in the air. Yeah, I saw that. There it is. Hey, can I, can I say one more thing? One more thing about the police state in New York City? Sure. All right, uh, this happened a couple of days ago. I'll make this real short. I was on the train. I take the train a lot. You know, I live in Queens. And uh, these two off-duty cops come on. They're off-duty. You can tell they're cops. They have on the pants. We all know. We all know. Uh, they're on the train. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to them talk. And I'm, I'm hearing them talk. And they're dropping the end bomb a lot. One, one guy was Puerto Rican. Another guy was, like, he might have been uh, Jamaican or whatever. Uh, well, they worked in the Bronx or whatever. And, and some, some, one of them worked in the city. But anyway... Uh, they were talking, and they were just talking about and laughing about this, how they choked out one guy, 
how they, you know, choke slammed another guy, how it was, you know, how it was so much fun. You know, the dude was begging for, for his life. You know, they, they snapped some guy's shoulder up. I'm like, listening at them, because I've been listening to you since I was 20 years old. I'm 32 now. So I, everything you said is what, you, what you've been saying led up to this moment. I'm like, wow. And they're, and they're supposed to be serving protecting us, and they're a bunch of freaking thugs. I'm looking at them like they're a bunch of thugs. They sound like thugs to me. Well, let me tell you, that's there. who like, they want to hire. They want to hire the criminal type, and that's, that's what they do in authoritarian societies. Clockwork Orange, Stanley Kubrick's film is based on a novel, you know, based on a futuristic dystopia where they hire the criminals. And the street gang that, that, that Alex, little Alex, has been part of when he gets out of prison, they're now the cops, and they beat him up. And that's what it is. And I've been in New York, and I've never seen police... Because here in Austin, i got to say, the cops are pretty nice, professional, friendly. People who complain about Austin cops, and, I'm, and we should keep them on a short leash because that's how it gets out of control, have not been around the rest of the country. In New York, I've seen women who are tourists go, Officer, sir, can you please tell me where this is? Do I look like a phone book lady? And, and then I've even talked to an Austin cop that happened to. Uh, he was up there visiting. And, I mean, you see them. And it, it's like the cops are all together, because I, I happened to run into a, 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 a parade they were having last time I was there for the talkers, a keynote speaker uh, award or whatever. And I was there uh, as the keynote speaker. Point is, I go, let's walk to Central Park and get some exercise before we go get in the cab and go catch an airplane. So it was like a Puerto Rico you know, day parade. And they had thousands of cops out for this little parade with all these kids and stuff. But they were there just bugging their eyes out and acting like the most scummy gangs. Because I grew up in Dallas. I grew up outside Dallas. We went into Dallas all the time. And, and by the time I was a teenager, I went in with friends to buy bootleg beer and stuff. I'll be honest, I was in there like every three days because you, you go into the worst neighborhoods and buy beer. Instead of a crack house, it was like a beer house. Uh, but, the, but it was a liquor store. So <laughs> you could have a 10-year-old go in there and they'd sell it to you. Uh, and again, that's because the law wasn't enforced there. That was a zone. I didn't understand that then. You know, when I'm 14 years old with, you know, my friends that were 16 going in and buying slits malt liquor or whatever, you know, to take it back to the party. But I don't know why I started even telling that story. Oh, but you know what gangs look like and how they act. And you go down the wrong road and there's 20 gang members at the end of the street acting tough. Gangs don't even act like this. These were like arrested development punks who were big wimps dressed up with huge pot bellies and their hats all gangster style and, and cops smoking cigarettes and cigars and, 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 and waving their arms around, black, white, Hispanic, didn't matter. They looked like total filth. And you're like, my gosh, th this is a group of miscreant criminals. And their union runs the city. Nothing can stop them except when they breathe deadly dust, they're not going to get treatment. Uh, but, I mean, what do you make of what I just said? Uh, it's all true. I mean, I'm a, I mean, I know there's a cop that works in the 6th Precinct uh, up here in New York City that uh, he's an Italian guy. He he, he, he has a big, the big pot belly uh, thing. He, he, he smokes cigars. And, you know, every time you see you know it's him because he always has a big, thick cigar in his mouth all the time. And, he, and he's a troublemaker. He's one of those guys that will get in your face. Uh, you know, just because he got a little badge on his chest, and he thinks that you just supposed to bow down to him, and I, and I just don't do that. Like I said, I've been listening to you for a long time, and um, I, I, I take a lot of what you what you said on radio and what you teach on the radio, and I put it to to the to the to youth on the street when these cops come out and just bug you, because everyone knows when you go to the like the West Village in New York City, the Sixth Precinct is one of the most racist. I have some good friends that work there. There's a lot of good cops there, but as for the majority, man, there's a lot of racist cops that work that beat, and they they they'll come up to you and just start stuff with you, man. I mean, since they're well, awesome. listen, they had two hundred and three thousand five hundred stop and frisk warrantless searches in the first three months of this year. That came out yesterday, and, and the thing is, I have experienced it. I have experienced the New York police. I've been in their jail before for protesting. And, uh, you know, at one point, they took my handcuffs off and said, do you want to do something? As about six of them stood around with billy clubs. And I'm just like, man, just put me in the jail cell. No, I don't want any trouble. And it was all, we're cowards. Do you want to do something, big guy? And I'm like, well, number one, I'm not, I said, I'm not a big guy, and I'm just protesting. And no, sir, I, I don't want to. And they're like, good, then get in there. 
And, and, and then I described the guy they had bringing McDonald's bags and, and, and orange soda drinks to people that had been in there for days. It was like over 100 degrees in the cell. It was like 90-something in the summer, 100-something degrees in there. They put me in a jail cell with feces everywhere. All They were laughing, put me in one on, on purpose that was overflowed and everything. They were laughing. And they had like a mentally retarded jail guard, like out of a movie, like Quasimodo, going, you want the burger? You want the... And there was these black guys begging for the food. And they sounded like they could barely talk either. I mean, talk about dehumanized people. And they're going, I want it, please. And after about an hour of off and on begging, he, he gets all sweet and goes, I give it to you. I give it to you. And he and it's the little white jailer sitting there giving him a hamburger and an orange drink and, and guys begging and thanking him. And I'm like, my God, I've entered the vortex of hell. I almost wanted to stay in there just for the anthropology research of it. But I'm telling you, this is what they're done to us. This is this is what tyranny is. This is what they've turned us into. And it was some corrupt cop's brother or cousin. I guess they couldn't get a job anywhere. That's the new welfare. Is you just get your your dumb cousin the job? And so he was getting the power trip of people begging for the food. He wasn't evil, and then giving it to him, talking to him like they were a dog. I just can't believe what we've turned into. I just can't believe it. And. The cops laughing that I was in a room with feces all over the bench and on the floor, and it didn't dehumanize me. It made me it, it dehumanize them. I just sat on one edge. And if you think some crap's going to hurt me, you got nothing coming. And I just felt so sorry for them. And I thought, my God, I come from a classy family. I come from Christians. I come from the founders of this country. I am so blessed. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. Donald in California, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, you're a true American patriot. All I'm trying to do is survive, brother. Thank you for calling. You know, most of these hosts screen your calls. They're rude to you. you got to thank them. I want to thank you for calling and making my talk radio show. I want to thank you for calling. Go ahead. Well, I'd just like to uh, tell you some things about what's going on in the deserts of Southern California here. We've got the globalists preparing for a civil war in America. Just the other day, my friend and I were out doing the usual thing we like to do, shoot our 22s, look for some jackrabbits, and we hear some helicopters above our head. We look up, and no more than 150 feet above our heads in American airspace are two Mexican Navy helicopters flying with American helicopters together. No, that's admitted. We, we Ten years ago, we'd hear about this from credible sources, but now in the last three, it's in the news. They're allowed to go in U.S. airspace. Furthermore, there were hundreds of military vehicles out in the desert canyon as if they were being stored out there for some reason. I've seen helicopters with weapons on them flying over urban areas in here in Southern California. Well, sir, you know in NLE 09 and, and scores of public statements, they plan to use, quote, Mexican and Canadian troops to suppress U.S. insurrection. This is a globalist pre preparation. This is what I'm worried about, Alex. This is what I'm worried about. There's only one way out in California, and that's east. And, and that's through that their, desert, yep. Yeah. Uh, through the desert, and that's where all the equipment's at. You mean west? Only one way out of California? No, no, that would be east, back towards back towards Nevada. Now, yeah, there's only that one highway there in the south. The 80 east is the only highway through the desert, and that's the main highway that I've been seeing all of the uh, military equipment on. Furthermore, there is a uh, U.S. Border Patrol station there called Cameron Station that I believe is a front for a FEMA camp. Well, of course it is. They admit all those bases and areas are. The staging grounds where you they pull up suddenly, oh, we've got a security risk on you, uh, Mr. Jones. We know, oh, your wife and children, they're going to go with these people. And they got the big pot bellies <laughs> rubbing their hands. And then right, right at that point, your kids are going with the pedophiles, you're going to a torture dungeon. And that's just how they are. They say they're having budget problems, but every time I drive by, there's a new building, there's a hundred brand new SUVs, and there's 30 guys standing around with their engines running. And I've driven through these 100 miles into the U.S. If you're a citizen, speak perfect English, you're, you're out of the car, you're trash. Illegal aliens, they just flag them through. Come on in, baby. Come on in. Come on in. It's party time. 
I've seen it happen. Oh, I see it all the time. And they go, we want to search your RV. No. Fourth Amendment. They're like, drugs. And I go, you bring the drugs in. You get caught all the time. I go, go ahead, but I want to sue all of you. And I go, you're too busy making a little extra cash. You don't want to search my vehicle, do you? That's right. Go find somebody easier. Don't claim you want to search my car for drugs. Everybody knows the Border Patrol imports the stuff with the Cocaine Im Importation Agency and the FBI. The Justice Department, a bunch of narcotics trafficking murderers as well. I got to a lot of the news. A ton of it's up at InfoWars.com. Department of Homeland Security is taking your children's DNA without your permission. Uh, we've got um, Charles in Louisiana who can rarely get through, listening about 14 years. Charles, you're on the air. What's on your mind today? Well, first of all, sir, I'd like to say God bless you and your staff. I don't know where we'd be without you, and that's the truth. You've been more, more than 100 percent to the people. But uh, but I understand it's been reported today that they're going to be uh, Russian troops at uh, Vermont, Vermont Airport in a drill. Yeah, they were just going to have them in Colorado, but they are going to have some extra Russians around. Because if, it, if we'll let TSA grab our daughters and sons, and if we'll let Russian troops train to take us on, we'll put up with anything. That's what it's all about. Jones. I'm, you know, I'm not a troublemaker, but the people is going to have to get the, the torches and pitchforks out. If we we are surrounded, sir, and we, they, they're getting stronger every day, the people is going to have to really get get really behind you, behind this program, and quit fooling around and really put their heart into this. They're going to have to make friends with death, and their fear will go away. We got to think like soldiers, like they do. And if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't even know where we're at. There's only a few of y'all out here giving you, uh, putting your lights on the line. Well, let me tell you, there are a lot of people who are awake. People who aren't, well, you've told the stories of how when you handed out thousands of my films making copies and things over the years, you went from the police threatening to arrest you to them buying you coffee and buying copies of the films so you can make copies and giving you more money so you can make copies for others. It's that process. In the beginning, a patriot's a scarce man, hated and feared and scorned. But in time, when a cause succeeds, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. And that's what it comes down to here uh, is that I was being harassed by the feds at the Texas Seacoast. Everybody else was, too. Never been like this before. I've been down there 20-something times, probably, or more. Probably more than that. It's, it's the new way to get us used to being slaves. Everybody I talked to, literally, cars driving by were listeners. Cars parked on both sides of us were listeners. They were being harassed. Uh, I left and went to Port Aransas. People inside the condominium place where we rented a hotel room were listeners. People at the pool were listeners. The people at the fishing shack were listeners. Let me tell you, our numbers are much greater than we know. Just from little old Alex Jones being known, that's a radar ping. The globalists know that. They're spying on everything. They ought to be scared. They need to be scared. Uh, that's why they're trying to flaunt all this in our face right now. Let's keep getting the word out in the info war. So when they do stage terror attacks, we all know who did it. And so when they're sitting there posing as saviors and things, we'll be able to expose them. Plus, our people are everywhere, Charles, now, watching them. And, yeah. Your tapes, give it to the, 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 the loved ones. Um, a few dollars, it'll wake somebody up and save a life, perhaps. I ask people, quit sitting down and being bench warmers. Get behind. We must get behind this program. You are putting it out. We must get behind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's, let's fight this with our hearts and souls. And I just want to thank you, sir, for being a man. Well, I appreciate your call, and God bless you, uh, Charles. I think being a man just means that you are realistic. There's no making a deal with this. It's like learning you have horrible lung cancer. You, you've got to get it removed. or you've got, uh, It's not like, man, you've got courage going and having that cut out. Well, what, what, do you, what do you think I'm going to do here? I mean, it's like being mugged by somebody. I mean, you're going to fight back. And the cops pull up and go, boy, I can't believe you just beat up this big old mean guy with all these convictions. It's like, well, that actually happened one time. I looked at him. I said, what do you think I'm going to do? I mean, somebody starts trying to beat me in the head with a club. I mean, I'm going to fight back. I mean, I, because it's harder to get on the ground and let them beat me. I, I don't understand this. I mean, that's the thing about it, folks. Being a man, you also realize that it's your job to stand up against corruption for the innocent. And every time I look at, you look at what Nazi Germany did and other tyrannies, the way they went after the poor and the sick and 
you know, them beating old women on tape and stuff. I mean, you're like, how do they do that? This is the government went and hired scum, went and found them. You understand that? That's happening now. And there's a battle for the soul of the police happening right now. God bless you all, my friends. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?